Our next guest is a Canadian visual artist who's been called the next Andy Warhol, wow. but it's his stunning creations that put him in a category all his own. That's right, here to talk about his show tonight in New York City and being the next big thing in the art world mm -hmm. is Daniel Mazzoni. Welcome Thanks to Thanks for having me. My goodness, you. your work is exquisite. How Thank long you. does it take you to create one of these masterpieces? Between you know, 150 to 200 hours, depending on the size. Because most of them are ranged between you know, four feet to have one that's 13 feet by six feet tall. Whoa. And it looks like stained glass, but it actually isn't stained glass at all. Well, are... when I was a kid, uh, I grew up doing stained glass with my mother. She was a stained glass artist. Mm -hmm. So um, some of those techniques I, I used with, with this, but it's actually all ripped paper that I glue onto wood. Wow. And it's fission, finished with a resin, so they look like glass, essentially. Uh, but you'll see some of the pictures in the background, like Napoleon's hair is the original newspapers from uh, uh, 1862, or 1762, sorry. And the newspapers are about Napoleon. Wow. So some of the pieces have, you know, newspapers up to 300 years old. Same with JFK and his face, I can see some. JFK, of it's original right November 3rd, 1963, the day after he died. This is the Dallas newspaper. I have uh, one at the show tonight of Abraham Lincoln. It's the original newspaper from uh, the 1800s. How do you go about acquiring these artifacts, and then how do you go about securing them and incorporating them into the work? Well, you, you know, I, I go on some online auctions, or there's some auctions you can go to for old newspapers, and, uh, you know, I'll just kind of go through, you know, what dates in history were special, and, you know, buy that newspaper, and I'll just create something around that. Like, for instance, the Napoleon piece, the, his hair is the newspaper, his jacket, the white part is Marie Antoinette's will. And, uh, and back then, he commissioned <clears throat> Breguet, a watch company, to, to, to make a watch, especially for Marie Antoinette. Mm -hmm. which is, uh, so in his face, it's all watch gears. Watch gears, French war boats, uh, pictures of France. The jacket is all maps of France. There's gold bars in his sleeves. That so all the pictures I make, the materials tell a story of, you know, the subject that I'm, I'm doing. So it gives a little bit of a soul to the picture as but well. Your things are so amazing. How does your creative mind work? Do you, how do you figure out what you want to do, how yeah. you want to do it, what you incorporate into it? Well, what I'll do usually if I do something historical, but I, I do regular people as well. Like mm -hmm. anything that inspires me, it doesn't have to be famous. I mean, I, I like the famous people because they have, you know, a lot of them have, like, they grew from a difficult story to something great, so that's inspiring for, I think, anybody. But uh, what I do is I'll study a subject or someone I meet, and, you know, I'll ask them what they like or where they came from, or, you know, tell me about your life, things that have happened to you, what inspires you. And, and right away, you know, visions will pop up of different pieces of paper I can use that will help, you know, articulate the story of this person. Or, you know, for Pablo Picasso, he's Spanish, so I used a lot of his artwork or letters he wrote, so his handwriting is in there. Or uh, Spanish peppers, because he was from Sp uh, Spain, and Spanish plates, a matador's jacket. It just, it gives a, it, it tells a lot about that person, right? So mm -hmm. I'll study the person first and then decide what pieces of paper I'll use to incorporate the colors, right? Mm -hmm. And then I kind of just build it as a, like a sculpture as I'm going along because you want to give dimension to the characters, right? So sometimes with paper, it's not like paint you can't shade, right? So you have to kind of, you just build it like a sculpture. So some people say, how do you do it? And I say, I'm not even sure myself. <laughs> sometimes I'm just going and I don't really know till the end of the piece of how it's going to look because mm -hmm. there's so many pieces. So there's a lot of building when I do it. You also play with scale a lot as yeah. well. Why is it important for you to have your, some of your pieces be larger than life? I like the pieces big just because it has that wow factor. Mm -hmm. Because when you see my pieces in person, you'll see, you know, uh, like for instance, there's a Charlie Chaplin there, and there's got to be, you know, 20,000 pieces in it. Wow. So, and exactly, that's what people <laughs> see it, they go, Wow, I, this guy's nuts, or he's got a lot of time in his hands. But I, I love to do it, you so know. So wait, are you nuts, or do you have a lot of time? I on think your there's hands? a little bit of both. There. Okay. <laughs> but you know what? I love to do it. I, I, I'm just, I'm fortunate to get up every morning, and you know, even I'll work 15, 16 hours a day. And, but, you know, I get to wake up every morning and do something I love, and it's, like, such a blessing. And well, you're not the only one who loves it. Your work has been selling, like, crazy. The yeah. hedge fund billionaires love it. Your yeah. last three shows sold out. What do you attribute your success to? Why do you think the art world is so taken with what you're creating? I think, you know, it's just because it's something different. You know, mm -hmm. it's, there's, there's nobody nobody's doing, that's doing art like this. Uh, it's nice that, that, that I'm telling a story through it. So I, I find most people that have bought it just go, wow, I've never seen anything like this. So it, it's nice that I've created something that people like. And, you know, the idea behind the artwork, putting so many intricate pieces was, 
you know, so many people go through life, we're all busy, you know, everyone goes, so oh, I have this appointment, the day goes by, but nobody stops to appreciate anything. Mm. So I've put so many pieces in different colors and pieces and materials in my artwork that you can't walk by it without stopping. Yeah, we're definitely stopping to see your work. So hopefully that will, <laughs> so hopefully that will force people in everyday life to just stop and uh, you know, appreciate something of beauty. Well, what do you make of the comparison to Andy Warhol? It's honestly, I, I'm a big fan of Andy Warhol, so it's kind of like when I first read it, I thought like, oh my God, you know, like, <laughs> it's it's a blessing. If I could fill half of what have you, what have you, he's done for the art world, then mm -hmm. I'd be like super happy. But um, you know, I'm just I take it as a blessing to say yeah. something so nice. We so, just heard about a Picasso that sold for 149 million. I'm not a there Giacometti yet. <laughs> well, a Giacometti sculpture that sold for 100 and something yeah, yeah. million as well. You can't help but think about commerce when it comes mm -hmm. to the art world now. Does that in any way influence your work? Uh, no, I, you know, listen, I, I think art is just there for anybody to buy. I, it does, I, for me, it doesn't matter who buys it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's, it's for whoever can appreciate it. If you appreciate it and you can afford it, then, you know, mm -hmm. buy it. Yeah. And so for which groups of people buy it, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. I think it's for everyone to enjoy. Well, we have to talk about the art on your arms. How many tattoos do you have? Mm -hmm. Do you know any more? <laughs> You know what's funny? When I was uh, when I was traveling one time, I was in customs, and they said, "How many tattoos do you have?" And I said, "Well, it's kind of just one big tattoo." Mm -hmm. uh, do you create I, them all yourself? No, actually, it's Japanese art. My friends, he's in Toronto. He's really good at it, and I just told him, "You know, can you do it?" I was only supposed to get a half sleeve, and. <laughs> He ended up doing two big drawings, and I said, fine, I'll take both. you got to do them both today. So he did all the line work in one day, and I was kind of forced to fill them for the next year and a half. Wow. So I did that. I did my chest. I full back. And then... Are you serious? Oh, wow. Well, you are an artist. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now tell us real quick about your show, because it's happening tonight here in New York City. Yeah, it's from 7 to 11. It's uh, on 38th Street between 3rd and Lexington. It's uh, 401 38th Street. Okay. It'll be from 7 to 11, Center. lots of champagne. So... Please and lots come of beautiful well. art, the Carriage House Center. Yeah, tonight absolutely. only in New York. Yeah, All right. please. it's one night only. All right, it's worth it. Thank Thanks. you so much for joining Thanks for us. Having me. Thanks it. so much. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. And we'll be right back with more right. Rise Entertainment 360.